how are you today? Um, so uh, I'm Sean and as you probably know me I'm a saxophone player and a classical guitarist and today uh, I'm doing something a little bit different because a couple of years ago my uh, uh, I had an inheritance of my grandfather's bassoon. My grandfather passed away before I was born in 1959 and the bassoon uh, stayed with other another faction of the family for many many years. It basically hung on a wall and uh, was also stored in a basement and here it is right here and uh, it, I had it restored when it did come to me uh, I think it was 2019 it was sent to me from a relative in British Columbia and I was quite excited to get it but I just haven't had time to to look at it well I have looked at it because I had it restored and uh, it, the case was in very very poor shape it was literally falling apart but the person who did it uh, re did the restoration did an amazing job it has these uh, uh, nice nice brass um, handles and locks on it uh, the bassoon must be about a hundred years old it's a uh, buffet crampon I hope I'm saying that right and uh, anyway I'm going to open it up and my goal today is just to make a sound <laughs> with it because I am a saxophone player and um, it's uh, uh, so I, I haven't had any experience with double reeds at all say for one time uh, a friend loaned me her oboe for like two minutes to, and I, I, I got a, a sound out of it but uh, other than that I haven't played a bassoon so um, I'd like to just show you here's the main portion of it um, I, I, I just hope I'll be able to get this thing together and and working so you can see the um, the BC buffet crampon at the bottom and it, it says um, Evette A and uh, Schaefer's 1820 um, past de, uh, de Giserp. Yeah, so I'm going to try to put this thing together for the first, not for the first time, but I assume this goes together like this. There's a little hole here. I'm going to have to remove my glasses because I'm nearsighted. Okay, and um, having a little bit of difficulty here. There. Okay. So there's there's part one done. And oh, probably before I do anything else. I should get the reeds out because I do know this much being a reed player the reeds have to be wet and uh, the man who restored it for me did uh, give me a couple of new reeds the only thing I don't have right now is some kind of a strap uh, there's a reed right there brand new reed and right now I'm just going to well get the fluff off it because it comes it came in cotton it's just cotton fluff uh, I'm just going to drop it in this glass of water right here and uh, let it soak for a while while I put this together. I do this on my saxophone too uh, sometimes uh, if it's a new reed. I've been using synthetic reeds on the sax. And uh, as you can see, this is the rope uh, <laughs> that my grandfather used um, at the time. Uh, so it's I, I'll probably invest in a, uh, a proper bootstrap. I think that's the term for it. Okay, so I've assembled these two portions, and uh, I'll put the uh, the bottom part on next. Um, yeah, so there's a there's a big hole and a little hole, so I assume that will go in. <laughs> okay, wrong side. All right, so this is it here. All my mistakes are just showing that I'm a complete noob at bassoon. Um, and it's a little bit tight. I might need to put some cork grease in there. I think I'm... I, do I have cork grease with me? I never thought of that, bringing any with me. 
Uh, there seems to be a little, <laughs> this is like all his old stuff um, that's been put in the plastic bag. Um, I, don't, I have no idea what this white chalky thing is for. Um, but here's a there's a tin that looks promising. It's going to be really old cork grease, maybe. Um, and it seems to be stuck. There it is. Okay, so, so the uh, is is just it's just so old. Um, I'm a little afraid <laughs> to open this up. Okay, so it's like a okay. It's not that bad. It looks like some kind of a yeah. It's some kind of a grease, but it has an amber an amber color to it. So um, I'm going to assume this is cork grease uh, or old school <laughs> cork grease. Um, if anybody knows what this is that I'm putting on, can let me know. But yeah, it's it's cork grease for sure. Um, but I do need it on this portion. Now it's stuck. Oh boy. You have to be careful it doesn't fly apart. Oh. I definitely need some grease on that. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's start again. So I'm just, uh, so I hope you appreciate the, um, uh, what's the word? I lose, lose my words. The authenticity of this video because you're seeing me do this for the first time ever. And again, I'm just hoping to get a sound out of it today. That's my big goal. And, uh, oh, gross, it's all over my fingers now. But whatever that stuff is, ancient cork grease. But it seems to be doing its job. It's, uh, it's, it's um, assembling much better now. Okay, now it's in there. Whew. Okay, so we've got uh, three portions. These two are, are separate. And then we put the bottom part. And uh, this is the, the top part. I was quite amazed when I got this. Maybe I'll put some pork grease here before I do that part. I was amazed when I got this because from the size of the case and knowing how large bassoons were, I was rather surprised that the case was so small. So, um, let's see. All right. So, it's, it's, it's such a, a large instrument. And uh, you can see, uh, this is interesting here. Um, if you see down here, um, on this key here, you can see that my grandfather put an extension on that because he was missing apparently his third finger or one of his fingers. Um, he was in the Boer War in uh, South Africa. I'm not sure how he lost his finger, but that's what he did to to enable him to play the bassoon. So um, I'm going to leave that on there. And uh, I'm glad the, uh, the man who did the restoration did too. Okay, and here's the, I believe this is called the crook. That just goes in. Actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the reed. Now that it should be nice and wet. And put the reed on. Okay, so I'll give it a little toot to see if I can get it going. I know you have to use a double embouchure. I do know that much, or else I'd crunch it off <laughs> with my saxophone embouchure. Oh, well, so far so good. Okay, <laughs> so I'll put this on now. And now I just have to make sure I'm doing this the holding this right. I think I put it on backwards, or did I? Just looking for where to put my fingers right now. Because it's, it's a, such an alien instrument compared to the saxophone. And uh, it has like, uh, it's all about the thumb on the, on the bassoon and how this works. So, um, I think if I remember right, um, 
I, I'm not going to bother with the rope today. Um, so I'll just try to hold it. And I'm not going to push any fingers down. I'm just going to try to make a sound. I think you're supposed to play it like this. Actually, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so that's my first sound. I just tried closing my embouchure a little bit more. I don't know what that note is. I'm just playing around with the thumb right now to see what um, how this thing is supposed to work. Okay, let me see. Okay, that was uh, pretty good. Um, and I, I don't know what my home keys are for this. Um, I don't think I'll be able to do much more today. Um, I assume... Yeah, I'm just going to have to get it, wait till I get my strap. So my fingers are doing nothing <laughs> right now, even though they're uh, they're on the holes and stuff. Um, <laughs> okay, well that's enough of torture for you. Um, but uh, I, that's promising. I got got it working, and so um, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, doing a series of these um, these uh, <laughs> videos and just me trying to figure out how to play this thing. So my next step is to get a method book of some kind or a fingering chart, uh, maybe a method book because they usually keep me uh, keep me on a, on some kind of a course, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video, <laughs> or at least got a few laughs out of it. So, um, yeah, um, I'll see you again.